Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also going to let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. Well, I am super excited and uh, super pumped to have you. I'd like to start out uh, just plugging into spirit. And, you know, if there's one thing that you would like people to know today or to remember about you and this call, could you share that with them right now? Yeah. The, I mean, the <laughs> you're not broken. There mm. really is nothing wrong with you you've only been laboring under a belief that there is and the <laughs> the open door mm. to liberation and freedom from all suffering is right there in front of you it's never been taken away <laughs> no one is nothing has ever gotten in the way of your opportunity to become fully yourself and fully step into that suffering free reality that is are the birthright of all of us. You, you, you're entitled to it. You know, you, you, forget what anybody else says. You're okay. You really are okay. Mm. This is this is the irreverence of this age. You're okay, really. Trust me on this. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, now this started for you uh, at a young age. I mean, this path, obviously. Tell yeah. me a little bit about your childhood and and how things culminated into, uh, I guess, a very a fateful and eventful moment as a young man. Well, yeah, it's, you know, as you you mentioned, my earliest mem mem memory is, <laughs> I mean, I would I, that memory is actually me hanging upside down on the side of the crib because I just mm. slammed my head on the side of the crib because she tied my mother tied my leg into the bed, and this continued. This was like this was not like a one time thing for the next four or five years, um, and I would get punished for uh, for you know wetting the bed and stuff. Um, it, it was it was just kind of the nature of the house. My mother was mentally ill, and it kind of mm. hung over everything like a pall, right? So there was, you know, my father just couldn't handle it; he was gone. So it was just like this very tense, loveless, um, difficult. You know, you you just never know who is going to show up. That that uh, you know, the, the day you know she'd check out. I mean, I I almost killed myself several times. I mean, accidentally, you know, electrocution and stuff because there was just nobody around. Um, oh. And but so and it, it just got uh, more and more tense. And by the time I was 12 years old, I was basically on the street every night. I was out gone all the time. You know, I was a 12 year old juvenile delinquent, mm. you know, running from the cops and stuff. And uh, you know, had it not been for the fact that I fell in love with music, I'm I'm pretty sure I would have ended up in jail. Um, but I had a talent for music, and I and, and I, I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, and uh, I was sold. And uh, so I invested all of my uh, my energy into uh, in, into that. Um, but this was rock and roll, right? <laughs> this was, you know, I wasn't playing Sousa marches or something, right? Uh, this was rock and roll and everything mm. that went with it. And so um, by the, you know, at 15, I just I, I started doing drugs, and uh, within a very short time. You know, it was the first time I'd, I'd actually felt a sense of relief. You know, I, I just at home, it was just nothing but tension. I never wanted to be there. Whenever I was there, I was hiding somewhere. Um, and and it was just kind of finally a place that I could really escape to. And so it just became, uh, uh, it, it became constant you know, to the point where I just, I, I couldn't get through a day without it anymore. And it was just... Uh, and, you know, it's fine for a while, right? Everything's great and everything's lovely, but little by little it begins to crash. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it did for me. And it became, I became darker and darker and darker. It 
peak when I was about 17, and then I started getting bad. I mean, really, really dark, nasty, hard, impossible to be with. Even my very, very closest friend tells me, tells me, gee, go away. I don't want to be, I don't want to see you anymore. You're the most, you're the most cynical, dark person I've ever met. And it's not just me. Nobody wants to be with you. Mm. So at this point, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 19. I graduated from high school. I, I, I'm not sure, quite sure how, because I don't remember any of it. You know, I'm five seven and I weigh 112 pounds. I mean, I'm totally emaciated. I'm just this, you know, I'm skin and bones, um, totally unhealthy. And, uh, do you want me to can go through the whole story? Oh yes, <laughs> all, yes. All, all the way up to the all the way up to the end. Yeah, okay. So, you know, it's after high school. I I'm going job to job. I can't get in any any kind of work. Um, uh, I couldn't hold a job if I you know, if my life depended on it. You know, I had no family to speak of. Um, I tried some college, dropped out. Couldn't you know? Couldn't couldn't show up at class, and. Um, so I, I got a I got a, a, a gig playing uh, playing drums in a uh, in a bar band in Wisconsin. At, at that age, at that time, uh, the legal age for uh, drinking beer in Wisconsin was 18. So all over the state of Wisconsin were these were these uh, beer bars, especially in college towns. So you know that's that's where I uh, that's where I headed off to uh, playing in this playing in this bar band with everything I owned in a in 1963 Rambler American 220 um, and a hundred bucks in my pocket. Uh, the car uh, threw a rod, completely uh, broke, broke down. And it cost me 85 bucks to have it towed off the highway. So there I was with everything I owned and 15 bucks. <laughs> they were nice enough to not send the car to the junkyard and let me sleep in it for a couple of days. While the uh, while the uh, the other guys came down to get me, they they took pity on me at the local diner and started giving me some, <laughs> giving me some some food and the like. And so you know, eventually they came down and got me, and so I'm living in this in this house with the other two members of the band. I'm sleeping on the floor in the living room because I was the last one to get there. There were only two rooms, and uh, that was my life. This was the glorious, glamorous rock star life, right? And so life was simply nothing more than, you know, you get stoned and, uh, you know, you play, you you get stoned. You get play, you play, you get high. You play, you get stoned. You play, you get high. That was life. Now, as as I mentioned before, I I just gotten, um, I, I was dark. I mean, I was just so cynical. I was at the end of my wits. I knew I was going nowhere. I knew that this path was totally empty. It was dark. You know, the, the end result was like, uh, you know, checking out. That was it. There was because there was no way out. I could not find a way out. Mm. I, I I knew that it was like, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I knew it. It, it. it couldn't continue this way. But I I couldn't find any 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 outlet, any door. And um, so it finally came to a head one night. You know, and um. It was a normal night, you know, we did our music thing, and then I was sitting around with a bunch of people getting high, getting totally wasted, as we did, as as I did every night. Um, but this particular night was different. And uh, as I was sitting there, um, high as a kite, I was suddenly uh, seized with this terror. And I, I can't even begin to describe it to you. It was like nothing I'd ever felt before. It just completely overwhelmed me, and my and my whole body went paralyzed. I couldn't move. The only thing I could move was my eyes. Mm. It literally would be, obey no command, uh, commands. I couldn't even feel it. My heart was just pounding in my chest. My head was pounding. I was <gasps> I was wheezing because my throat had had tightened up so much. I, I couldn't tell if I'd messed my pants. I mean, I I, I mean, I I completely lost control. And I sat there for a while in this condition, just, I said, this is it. Oh, this is it. I'm dying. Oh, great. Finally. I was just like so relieved because I, you know, I didn't have the courage to do it myself. And I sat there for a while and everything's distorted. I mean, it was just, it was, it, it was horrible. <laughs> I, I would not wish it on anybody. But suddenly something rather extraordinary happened. 
without any import, import, in, input from me, without any kind of anything, my body got up, walked out the door, and, and just started to walk. Mm-hmm. And I had no control over it. I mean, it was totally on autopilot, and <laughs> I had no idea what it, was, what it was doing. And it walked for about 30 or 45 minutes. It was turning corners. It was walking uh, just completely on its own. And then suddenly it stopped. It turned right. And then I was standing on a bridge looking down into one of the most disgusting polluted rivers you can ever imagine. And I just sat there. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a bridge that was like so high that I could you know, throw myself off and end it. It was it was like a walking bridge. But it was just this horrible smell and this brown. It was this dead river. And that particular river had actually at one time been one of the cleanest and most pristine in the entire country. Mm. And so as I sat there staring at it, just all of a sudden, just this volcano went off inside of me. And I was just ranting. And I was just so filled with venom and anger and hatred. And I was how horrible everything was and how horrible the world was and how we just destroyed this thing that was so beautiful and so pristine we just ruined it and i said and i've done exactly the same thing to myself i've just destroyed everything good about me i don't deserve to live i don't need any i don't deserve to breathe right in the middle of my diatribe i hear this voice this incredibly loud authoritative voice it says Look closer. Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barzande, host of the Wealth Revolution. And if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're going to get access not only to a free gift that's going to double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also going to get to be a part of the U.S. Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now daily where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're gonna get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join, and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you like to see more of it, Click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.